refresh your memory as what you already know about this building and the other building. Uh, I did some research last night, but I think the man's written too many notes. Uh, <laughs> uh, old Carver School. This is the old Carver School. Uh, it, it was sold to the uh, Maddox, uh, Maddox family. I believe it's about seven lots here. I had it surveyed before, and it's seven lots, I believe. And uh, it was sold to the Brackett Independent School District in 1919. Don't quote me on the dates. <laughs> in 1922, the, the Car uh, Carver School for Black People uh, moved into this uh, very building right here. Uh, this building used to be two-story. They had two classrooms up top and two classrooms down on this floor here. And uh, back to my notes. Uh, Ms. Charles Emily Wilson and her sister, Dorothy B. Wilson, taught many years in this building here. And later on, the government took it over, and they built this new school uh, over here. Hi. Come on in. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hello. How are you doing? How are you? No, I don't Hi, want you to call How are you? Do you need any help up? How are you doing? Hi. How are you? Doing good. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. There's some chairs right in the front. Okay. Uh, during the time of the... Black regiment, which is known as the Ninth Cavalry, when they were in Fort Ward, that's when they realized that they had animation. too many black children running around that needed an education. And that's another reason they will put this building. Uh, when they got that school over that field, they tore the top off of this one, and ever since then, even though we were having classes over here with Ms. Wilson, Charles Emily Wilson, there was another teacher that came in to replace Ms. Dorsey, and that was, all I know is her name was Ms. Murray. I believe uh, she was out of San Antonio. And we still, use this building. I guess today you can say that we used it as a theater or band hall. Auditorium. <laughs> Auditorium, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is going to be the worst. Come on in. I can remember you? Brenda went straight to the back. When I, and I still have the picture, but I'm not going to donate it to this museum. Well, a lot of you may remember Hi, Tony Wilson. Hi, how are you? Was Tony oh, got it. I got it. I put the other one. And myself okay. were dressed up there you go, as got a, you. a lady <laughs> up on that stage that used to be back there. I still got oh, that chair. Aunt G, we can get these chairs here. Uh, we'll see how this is going to be the worst video uh, moving around. <laughs> I believe that's when they uh, integrated somewhere around there. And Excuse me. so the, Sem the Seminole Cemetery Association purchased this land and buildings from the independent school district for 1100 bucks. Wow. You can't do that today. <laughs> 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 you can 
do that today. And uh, ever since then, this building has stayed up because this is where they held their, we held our meetings and whatever else we had to do was done in this building. I believe it was uh, about 2008, it, uh, yeah, I'm, don't quote me, but I believe it's 2008 that we started to renovate this building <coughs> for one purpose, to make it a museum. And believe me, it wasn't easy renovating this building. There's a cave down below. Uh, they used to keep the kids out of the cave by telling them there was a ghost of a murdered man down there. <laughs> and there's a tunnel that goes off, so what they did is they uh, put rocks in mortar, in mortar in the entrance to that tunnel to keep them kids, them kids out of well, I wasn't one of them. I was, I was too young, you know. And, uh, well, I don't want to bore you. Here you go. The reason we're here today is the dedication of this building, which is now officially Seminole Indian Cemetery Museum. And I'm proud of the association for sticking to the guns a long time ago. We said we were going to redo this building and donate it, not donate, excuse me, and make it a museum in memory of one person. And I've been informed that that's what they're going to do. It's in memory of Charles Emily Wilson. talking about books to put in the museum. I dug, I researched last night, everything. And what I have here is the official book. The book is Our Land Before We Died by Jeff Gwynn. Says, and he signed it himself for the association with all respect, Jeff Gwynn, 9-21-02. I hereby offer this book to Augusta Pines for the museum. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay, now we'll have a few words from the mayor, Andres. Rodriguez. Hold your book up. Hold the book up. <laughs> Eventually we'll get a book stand in here. Right now we have the books on a table over here in the corner. I would just like to take uh, say thank you for everybody showing up. Of course, uh, Judge here, uh, Mr. Young, and just everybody from the community from Brackettville, from Fort Clark Springs, from out of town. It's great to see when we all can get together and, and celebrate celebrate something from our past. Uh, the good thing, I see some more young people in here. I remember when we had a parade uh, last year. Uh, <laughs> when we had a parade last year, we had a, a, a handful of our young kids. And it's always important to have our young kids here so they can carry on their tradition and they can understand what this history means to all of us, you know. Uh, so it's very important. Uh, and I just want to thank everybody that came here. Uh, and someone was talking about earlier, it takes a lot of work. It really does take a lot of work to keep this something like this going on here. Uh, a lot of us do donate a lot of time, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears and stuff. So 
Uh, if you can possibly make, make a small donation, we would really appreciate it. Simple things happen, like, like we're trying to cut the grass. The lawnmower, the, the band on the lap lawnmower breaks down and stuff, so we had to run it out of here, go buy one, put it together, come work again. But any, anything you can do to keep this going, we do appreciate it. And, and I guarantee you, uh, we'll always have volunteers here to try to keep the grounds the way they should be kept and stuff. Uh, all I can say is thank you. It's, this, is, this, is great. this is a great focus for the town of Brackettville because this is some, uh, a beautiful tradition here. And, and it's a really an honor. And any mayor that comes after me uh, should always be, make an effort to attend these things and show these the, you know, people that come from out of town, from within town, that come here, we should show that appreciation, appreciation to you guys, because really, we really need you guys to, to help us, and, uh, and we do appreciate it. And I hope you, you, in the future, you know, the leadership keep, come, keeps coming out here and celebrate with you guys, you know, because it takes a lot of work. And I do appreciate it, and I hope we can preserve it for many, many, many years to come. Because like we said at our uh, parade, lest we forget, and we don't want that to happen because then the history fades away, you know. Then somebody else rewrites the history the way they think it should be written. Okay, so it's important that we do not forget. Thank you guys. And like we say at my church, I love you guys whether you like it or not. <laughs>